$10,000 from this time last year. And all of the building, wiring, plumbing, and inspection fees. And how much was that? Um, it's down $101,000 from last year. And I'll be putting all of this into, into oh, the thing you. that'll okay. be in your packet. Um, Medicaid from the schools, I'm very concerned about. Um, we budgeted 227. We've only received 839 to date. Um, so I know that it's going to fall about forty thousand dollars short, but I have still haven't seen any more money come in since then. So I'm I'm working with the schools to find out what's going on there. Um, as we knew before, parking ticket revenue was down. Um, we're down three thousand dollars from this time last year, and of course that's with the fee going from ten to fifteen. So um, you know we already have discussed some of the reasons why that might be. Um, and then our reimbursement for PVTA, what was budgeted and what we got was uh, $21,000 less. So some of the good news is counteracted by the bad news. So um, I don't think that there's going to be any great windfall at the end of this year, but I think we're holding our own as far as revenue. Have you been able to estimate how much we saved over last year on snow? I have a call into Ned on that. Right now, snow and ice is $40,000 in the red. And I know Ned was going to fill the salt shed um, for another $40,000 because we thought that was a wise move, you know, um, to do. So, and I have a call into him to find out if he runs a crew. You know, does he keep an overtime crew on for snow and ice? Um, so I've got some questions for him around that. But, I have been thinking we might go as much as three hundred thousand dollars based on history if we go a hundred. Um, so that's good news on the mm -hmm. expenditure side. So. So. So the total. I know we spent eight hundred and forty-two thousand dollars in snow and ice last year. Mm -hmm. So, this year we're talking about three hundred and twenty or thirty thousand. Um, I don't. Let me look up what we budgeted. I brought. I mean, eight, like last year was a, was a significant figure. Um, we were transferring in yeah, two hundred million dollars, and so that was taking roof, taking snow off roofs. Right. Um, okay. So there's. Yeah, I talked about the revenues, and I thought here's the expenditures right here. Okay. So you asked about snow and ice. Snow and ice, we budgeted three twenty, three twenty five. 326, and we have expended 365, so we're 40 in the hole there. So on the expenditure side, the places that I have some concerns about, um, everybody's payroll is running pretty much as expected, which is good. Uh, we're going to need to add a little bit, maybe $2,000 to the treasurer's uh, salary account, because as you know, George was out for a significant period of time, and I had to... Uh, pay Chris Bissell um, out of great pay, and I brought in Melissa Zawadzki for a few hours a week as well. So that'll be a small transfer there. Um, legal services, I do believe we're going to need more. We transferred 50000 at the last meeting. Um, we have spent to date 95000 and we budgeted ninety six. So at the moment, there's about $1,200. But I do think that we'll need the fifty we just transferred and potentially fifty more. Um, and this is lucky from the East Stanton that told it that was on Friday. Yeah, I had just on Friday. So. I had Melissa Zawadzki come in on Fridays and do the things that Chris Bissell was not able to do. Um, but I have to say, Chris Bissell did an absolutely fabulous job keeping the place going um, in George's absence. So. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so legal services, I'm con a little concerned about. Um, I want to look at central services. Munis is down today, so I wasn't able to get in there. Central services payroll is a little bit over budget, and I need to look at that. Um, it's nothing terribly significant. Um, Munis is down again today? Munis is... It, oh, to, this is for an upgrade. This is a planned outage. Oh, okay. Last yeah. week it was a disaster, too, wasn't it? L last week was something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was not expected. But the Munis, we're doing, we're upgrading, so we're closed from today till sometime tomorrow. Are we moving our control out of here to another location? Is Minnis going to be controlled from a different locale now? That's what I understand. Uh, I, I'm looking into the possibility of having moving to a cloud-based system, meaning we would it would be done over the internet rather than residing here locally. 
but we're still doing it locally. Oh, okay. We're I'm just curious. I just, I just heard it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're investigating that possibility because it is an option to have it, to have it reside at Luminous and we just log in online. Yeah. Uh, like, and then they would have they would their be, gurus could keep it working. They yeah. would keep the server and the storage and all the other pieces. Their, their expertise. Is, is, is yeah. there, so there must be a cost. Yeah, that's what we're trying to determine that. whether it would yeah. be a savings to us in the long run to move to migrate to that system. Good. So, Saves us the hardware. And, yeah, and it works. And and it works. Works. <laughs> the technicians they have to keep the hardware going and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. So okay, yeah. So we're look, I, uh, at the MMA conference. There was a number of communities that did presentations on that and some other systems. So we've been trying to get uh, them to come out and do a presentation about maybe our moving over. Okay. Thank you. So kind of just to sum up um, the areas that I'm concerned about on the expenditure side. Um, Police overtime, the chief had told us early on that he thought that he this might be the first year ever that he might have to request additional uh, appropriation for overtime. In speaking with him today, he will be giving me a number later this week, but I think he is trying his hardest to bring his budget in because I think he's very proud of the fact that he has never gone over budget. And so I'm very optimistic that we may not need to do anything for the police. Uh, fire, uh, originally the chief had, I had projected about 120, 130 needed for overtime. Today he told us maybe about 50. So that's going wow. in our favor. Uh, dispatch um, had a number of people that were out. There was some maternity leaves, there were training issues. Um, number of reasons that dispatch was struggling this year to keep their overtime under control. We thought about 45,000. I think it's going to be closer to 50 to 20,000. Um, flood control, we know we've already had to supplement that, um, and that may need more depending on what happens this spring, but about 20,000. And then snow and ice, um, you know, I've plugged in here about 150. Um, I'm optimistic that it might even be less than 100, so that's good. Uh, legal, we, we, as I said, I think we, we've already done 50, we may need to do another 50. Veterans, we've already done 200,000, and that should get them through to the end of June. Um, central services, um, I have some concerns. There was some miscommunication when they built their budget, and I don't believe that they budgeted for their share of the ESCO payment. Um, so we may have to um, supplement their utility budgets there. And then unemployment depends on who's on and who's off and, and that kind of thing. So we got we had a million, one million, one thousand two hundred and ninety-eight dollars of free cash. Um, I'm thinking we may use anywhere, maybe counting the 200 for the vets and the 100 for legal, we may end up spending five to 600 at top 700. So I think for the first time in a long time, we might actually end not using all of our free cash. It won't be a significant amount, but it's better than we'll have some. At least we'll have some. Significant, <laughs> right? Yeah. For, yes. So, um, so, I mean, I think. FY12 is going as well as it can be expected. I mean, I think we were definitely thrown some, um, up, you know, good good factors this year. Over time, no significant events in the fire department and the snow and ice are the biggest. No, I, could, oh, no, I was just going to say, and also, you know, one of, many, I want to thank many of the department heads because they've been, so we've been really watching their budgets very carefully to try to make sure we got here some money to spare, so we've been working on it. If, if we have um, central services within folks in the ESCO, how much is that? 35000 Oh, so it's not a crazy It's amount. not a huge amount, yeah. I think the ESCO was very confusing to everybody, and I'm finding that it's it was what held up our tax rate by a week, too, the way the ESCO was done. And it's just because Northampton tends to be the first one to do a lot of things. So um, anyway. Right. I had discussed the ESCO pretty in depth with uh, Chris Mason. Mason. I always want to call him Morris. <laughs> Chris Mason. <clears throat> and um, and I, I was kind of curious as to how we're going to gauge our savings. That David Pomerantz and I talked about that today because one, one concern we have is that um, Forbes Library has sent us data that shows that their utility costs haven't decreased. And they did a chart, um, and I sent that to David, and David um, sent it off to Con Ed. 
Uh, because we're in that, we're kind of in an in-between stage where we haven't finished construction. Mm -hmm. um, but the measurement and verification has to happen because, number one, they need to give us utility figures for next year, which is what David is waiting to refine his budget on. And secondly, we need some answers as to why both Forbes and Lilly are saying that they haven't seen a decrease in their utility costs. And I'm understanding that on a lot of the school uh, buildings also. Okay. So I'm kind of curious. <clears throat> when I asked Chris uh, Mason, about how we're going to gauge our savings. He says, well, we won't gauge our savings. He says, the ESCO company will gauge our savings. And so I had asked, I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, he says, they're going to tell us how much we save. And I said, so that's the guarantee. And he says, oh, yeah, that's the way it works. Because if they put in an 85% or they put in a 95% efficient boiler and we had an 87% boiler before, they're just going to take the numbers and say, this is what we've saved. Well, I don't think that is exactly the way it was sold on the council floor. We were going to see a marked decrease in the amount of energy that we used, mm -hmm. and that was the guarantee. And then I find that we also removed several things from the original proposal, and there was no offset in the cost. It was still the same money, but the things that were listed in the book were actually removed, such as Florence Grammar School. Uh, there were several other things, the windows in uh, the Wachowski building, and there was no, we were given no, uh, no credit for that. And I know we have windows in the Wachowski building right now, one that is being held up by a couple of sticks, and one that is nailed shut because it fell out, and they said, well, no, there's not enough money to do that particular window or those two windows or the payback isn't quick enough for, but that's not what we were sold. We were sold at city council that this six and a half million dollars was going to save us this amount of money over a period of 15 years. And from what I'm getting from Chris Mason, that's not the program at all. He said, ESCO is going to tell us how much we've saved, regardless of what our, what our energy bills are. I was thinking cubic feet of gas, gallons of oil. I don't mean the dollar amount. I mean the amount of energy used, because you can't regulate how much a gallon right. of oil is going to cost. You need to look at the units. I want to know the therms. I want to know what was going on. Yeah. He says, well, that's not the way it's going to happen. I said, well, that's the way we were sold. This is a $6.5 million taxpayer and uh, I, I didn't want to argue with him, but that's how he told me. He says, ESCO will tell us how much we've saved. Well, it's probably something that yeah. the conference can go over better. Yeah, we're going to try to get, because of these library issues, we're going to have him investigate this, and we can have him come to finance and give us an update on that. That's okay. Um, and, and walk through it again with us. So. Yeah, because I just think cubic feet of gas is, is pretty close at the school buildings. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's just something. I'm just. I'm just. I'm really curious about it. I want to know if uh, we're actually. If this guarantee is actually going to. Is going to work out. Right. Um, yeah, I know because the schools um, planned on one hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars in savings. Right. Um, so if they don't have that one forty-seven in savings, that's that's a little issue. Yeah. So just like it is for the library. So. And uh, and then it's hard to gauge from last year to this year. Well, you would think this year was mild. But we can do heating degree days. Right. I, 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 it was my understanding that the formula that they were going to use was going to factor in the different heating degree days and, and, and give us some sort of, you know, you used X yeah. amount of therms less. Because That's as you right. say, you can't measure this in dollars. You have yeah. to measure it in usage. Yeah. It's a pretty so. easy, it's, it, it's a mathematical equation. It's, it's pretty easy to figure. Um, but I, I, the one thing I don't want to see is I don't want to see uh, they said it cost a thousand dollars, or you used a thousand cubic feet of gas to run this eighty-five percent efficient boiler. And last year, or, or any year, and then that this year it's a ninety-five percent boiler. And I don't want them to take. Well, you're going to take ten or twelve percent of that amount of gas off. <laughs> I want to know what the savings is, because um, I believe that's the way it was presented. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I can't speak for the whole council, but I know that's the way I that's the way I heard it. Uh, the way you're describing it is the way I understood it as well. Yeah. So it would be good um, to have David to clarify how that measurement and verification is going to work. Okay. So. We had quite, it was quite a discussion. So are you set with FY12? FY, um, just to, um, for a point of reference, I did look at our enterprise funds as well. And um, for revenue, um, the sewer is at, sewer enterprise funds at 76%, water is at 73%, and solid waste is at 65%. So they're, they're, so we're right, on so they're at, right on target. And their expenditures um, are even less, 62%, 57%. Solid waste is 82%, but that's primarily because of the pay down on that um, that bond, um, that bar, that short-term borrowing. So the enterprise funds look in good shape, the general fund looks in good shape, and uh, I didn't have a chance to look at the ambulance fund, um, because maybe this is down for a day, but I will by the time you get your report next week. Just before we move out of FY12, just so that we, um, just want us to all be clear and on the same page, so if we were to end up with you know, $200,000 of, of extra at the end of the year, that's still, that's not money we can use or apply to FY13 because it has to be certified by the state. So it's not, we can't. You can vote it, if you vote it by June 30th. So we could approve So if we thought we were going to have 200000 yeah. and you wanted to use 100000 in FY13, as long as we voted it before June okay. 30th. But as of June 30th, free cash exactly. disappears until it reemerges in December. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just want to. Um, so I want to be careful mm -hmm. what we're talking about. These are still projections at this point because we right. don't know mm -hmm. what's going to happen between now and the next right. in the fourth quarter. So. But we so second second meeting in June we could plug some holes if we needed to. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can still fiddle with the budget up until the 15th of yeah, yeah, July. Hmm. We got like We've two weeks. Mm -hmm. We got two weeks after the. Yeah, I, I always thought that after J July one, you could do your previous year. Yeah, you can do your previous year. You, I'm not sure. I didn't know you could do votes for your coming year. But I suppose you can because you can do those you're in, in August. You're in the you're yeah. in the year, yeah, but I think fine. you can still fit a little, little with twelve. Yeah. That's why we always meet before the fifteenth. We always have our right. yeah, mm -hmm. second meeting just. Just a little early sometimes, so we can. I'll double fix check. This. If we're if we're get in that <clears throat> position and, and the mayor wants to do that, I'll check with DOI yeah. just. Yeah, because sure we our one meeting is always before the middle yeah. of the month. Right. So. So I'll find out if if we wanted to appropriate some free cash if we do it the first meeting in that 15 yeah, day yeah. window. Is it is it still okay? We've actually had free cash certified as early as um, first week of October too, yeah. and as late as. February, right. the end of February. Right. Oh, this is a real, this is a full reval year. Yeah. It's not these interim year adjustments have become pretty major things, but this is a, yeah. this is the three year cycle, so that could, mm -hmm. the OR will be put yeah. through the ringer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just keep monitoring that. Um, so, FY13, the only um, updates, uh, again, um, we're looking, the, the health insurance is still a big issue. Um, we're, we're having another meeting with the Insurance Advisory Commission uh, Committee, uh, and, and we're going to be continuing to look at the Health New England proposal. Uh, we do have an, one other proposal from Blue Cross Blue Shield, but I, I don't believe it will be, um, it, it's not really an apples to oranges comparison. Primarily, it, well, it's a it's a it's a plan that um, has some fairly high uh, charges. They're trying to control where people get their health care, keeps the savings down. So they're implementing some high costs if you go to certain institutions or certain doctors, and they're also being very strict that they will not let the city reimburse employees like we've been able to do mm -hmm. for some of those payments. Full um, pays and such. Uh, because they're basic, yeah. Because they're basically trying to, they're trying to keep healthcare costs down and create a financial incentive for people, members, to actually go places where it's cheaper. And so, if the city were then to just say, "Go wherever you want, we'll pay the fee," then that kind of defeats the purpose. So, so it's 
probably not going to work out to be a major saving. So we're going to just continue to look at Health New England, and we've also asked for some other plans that they offer. Yeah, yeah, the, the difficulty here is that we've pretty much, over the last three or four years, tweaked every pot. We've done every possible tweak to the plan because you're not. You're only allowed. They're only allowed to do tweaks that are part of a, a, a plan that's been approved by the state. It has to be an approved insurance plan that they have been approved by the insurance commission. So they can't just you know create little hybrids. Uh, uh, there's just not enough time to do that and get it approved. So we're pretty much trying to work within the parameters of their existing plans. And um, so there's not a lot of a lot, not many more rabbits we can pull out of the hat in terms of over the last several years we've been able to do copay, you know, increase copays, or we've been able to offer reimbursements for hospital visits and things like that. Um, we're sort of uh, we sort of reached capacity there, so we're continuing to have a conversation with Health New England. Uh, we've gotten it down now from a 12 percent, 12.6 percent increase to about 8.25 percent. So it's come down. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've had two or three conversations with the president of Health New England, and they obviously want to they want to keep our business, and but at the same time we are you know we have to face what that is going to mean in terms of an increase. So we're that one's going to be one I think we're going to you know have at least one maybe two more meetings in the insurance advisory committee and see what they are willing to sign off on. Um, are, are, so they, we would, are they talking about the deductibles too? Because some of the insurance companies are real high on their deductibles. Well, there's a couple of the new types of plans that they're offering are called are these deductible style plans that are almost like a almost like an auto or a home policy where it's like a five hundred dollar deductible, and so you basically you pay the first five hundred dollars of and then after that the insurance kicks in, much like if you you know had a claim on your home and you have a five hundred dollar deductible. You for, um, it's a, it's new, it's different, and it's not obviously not the structure that we offer employees now. Um, and when they discussed it at the last insurance advisory committee meeting, there was not a lot of um, cheering or <laughs> excitement about about that type of a plan. Because um, uh, you know, basically, if you had to go get an X-ray or an MRI, you'd have to come up with five hundred bucks, right? You know, on the spot. So, 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 so it's uh, so that's going to be a challenge. So it, you said we're down to eight percent. Like last we heard it was at twelve. Yeah. So you're down to eight point two. Eight point two five. Eight point five. So like we're that. something just under nine hundred thousand. So basically, the what, what we're looking at nine fifty. Yeah. Yeah. That's the increase at eight eight point two five. And so with all the other um, you know projections that we're looking at in terms of new revenue, the the deficit that we're looking at right now is about seven eighty six as of today, projected as of today. Uh, in terms including of, the health that's that includes the health yeah um, uh, so that's that's where we are and we're continuing to try we, we've begun intensive departmental meetings we just met with the fire department this afternoon we're meeting with DPW we're meeting with all the big departments to go through their budgets to try to figure out ways that we can create savings although you know that's given the number of cuts that have been made over time there's not a lot there in terms of so, um, and then the other piece of it is I can tell you that uh, I, on the school committee side, they have, um, they've been meeting and their budget and property committee has been meeting and talking with the superintendent. Uh, they have, um, they have come up with sort of three budget scenarios, one being the level funded budget that I have requested. Um, then there's a level service budget, which would mean uh, we would, they would want the city to cover level funding plus additional personnel as well as their collective bargaining agreements. And then they've come up with a, a third scenario, which is sort of they've tried to take all the ideas from all the school councils for things that are needed, um, which is uh, even bigger. Uh, and so I know that they are going to be um, having a conversation with me on Thursday about those three budgets, and, uh, and I know they're going to be wanting to talk to the council about it as well. And um, so again, I'm I'm trying to be open to ideas. If there's ways that they think that I can find savings in the rest of the city budget to do that, I'm open to it. But I, the difficulty is it's a rather uh, large number. Um, 
So we're just going to have to keep trying to work through that. Yeah. Or could come in to a conversation being already 700,000 in the hole. I think that's what people don't understand <laughs> yeah. is that that's the difference. I mean, I'm asking, we, we were, we're proposing level funded, and that assumes we can erase that six or 700,000 dollar debt. So uh, even if we get there, that's level funded. So that was being optimistic. So, But it's obviously going to have an impact on the schools because they're the largest section, and so they've already been thinking that it could involve as many as seven or eight layoffs that they would have to, to do in order to be level funded. So it's it's definitely serious and we'll try to work through that. Um, so so that's, and then the only other piece is, uh, I think by tomorrow I will be releasing, I'm going to do I think six town hall budget type meetings. We're still waiting to schedule one in Ryan Road to coordinate with schedule, but uh, we're trying to just do them all throughout the city and uh, they're not really ward specific. We're just I'm just trying to do a bunch of them all yep. over the city. So no matter what ward you live in, if you, you can come, come, you can come. Yeah. So um, so I'm going to be announcing that. And again, trying to lay out sort of this is the picture and what are I, what ideas do people have? What what priorities do people have? And have that all of that input, and then and then be prepared to present a budget to the city council the first week in May. And then that will allow you folks to have your hearings. And It, it's going to be, I mean, it, it's more than tough right now. I mean, uh, this is the new normal. Um, yeah. This is Maybe not for this year. You know, they're, uh, matter of fact, um, just yesterday they talked about it being 2028 before we reach 2008 levels again. They started off at 2020, or 2015, excuse me, 2020, then they say 2024. Now they're saying 2028, so I don't think they really have a clue um, as to when we're going to reach these certain levels. But people have to realize too, and I look, my whole family is union, always have been all our lives. I've been an operating engineers, and everybody in my family is in a union. IBEW, local 108s, tin dockers, sheet metal workers, glazers. But a lot of these, um, uh, like I just went over it with the, uh, the glazers union, a lot of these uh, contracts are just, they're just unsustainable right now. They're absolutely unsustainable. And they're all starving, every single one of them. We've lost 30% lost in, in block grant money in two years. Mm -hmm. And the amount of money we've lost, what, 22%, I think, or something in our general uh, from state aid. Yeah. And the state, their revenue collections are behind what they thought they, yeah, they Absolutely. Be, which, that's one thing that does trickle down on us, is when they're out of money. Yeah. And, then and they, they still have no answer for Quinn. And they say we're one. They say they're 1.2 billion dollars behind the eight ball right now. Well, I mean, think about what that means to to us. Um, it's just not. I remember that mid-year cut in 2009. It was, it was murder. It was only 500 thousand dollars, but it nearly killed us. Put us in a revenue deficit. We robbed everything. We robbed overlay, a surplus. We went into trying collecting old personal property tax out of overlay and writing it off that so the Department of Revenue wouldn't kill us. Um, yeah, so no, I, don't, they, there's, they I don't know who's got an answer for this year or next year. According to Joe McCarrion, next year could be even worse. Yeah. Well, they put us in a revenue deficit and then penalize us in the next year. Well, the other piece that I've been also I keep meaning to make sure I include this asterisk, which is all that stuff about 213. But we also have a number of open contracts that we're trying, so we don't yep. even know what those impacts would be. Um, people that have been going for several years now without any increases, so that's a whole other uh, thing we're trying to factor in as well. So and that has to end somewhere. I mean, there's only exactly. it'll only take it for so long. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, but and, and we say that it only take it for so long. But what the hell do you do if the money's not there? True. Yeah, I know you know. And then we were getting 99 weeks of unemployment. I didn't expect you to come <laughs> up with an answer. Yeah, exactly. I was just <laughs> making a statement. Buy lottery tickets. That's yeah. all. You know, no, 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 no. Is not don't buy the lottery. Just kidding. Just no, they're not going to give you the money back anyway. Yeah. It's a fool's errand. Yeah, I know. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it's going but, down. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how. Uh, I have no answers. Yep. Okay. No magic bullet. Well, I think it's just we're going to. It's what we've been trying to do since December, sort of tighten our belt. Yeah. 
and, and just be ready for this new environment that we have to operate in. So, so, so how much do we get from the water? States? Well, they don't call it lottery aid us. anymore. They, they call it yes. additional. No, they call it unrestricted, unrestricted. government aid. Well, there was a big article in the paper like, that we're not going to get as much money because it's going down. Right. I I forget what that is. Um, on the revenue side, so I have it. Remember the first year we got what they told us they were going to give us, and after that we got a third. Three point four. Three point four million. Three point four million. And we had three point seven and eleven. So. And it just keeps going down. So we lose three hundred thousand. Well, it's no big deal. That's only half of what our 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 chapter what nine C cut was in 09. I think the hardest thing for departments is we you know we say level funding, and we'll, when we say level funding, usually people jump to say, oh, okay, that's worst case scenario. No, level well, funding is best case that, scenario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it's hard because the little departments, you know, the one two three person departments, you know. can't touch them because they become dysfunctional. It don't work anymore. No. You know, it's only the big departments where you can actually do anything because, mm -hmm. you know, you got two or three people in an office. What can you do? Well, well, level funding is still a cut. I don't care how you look at it. Mm -hmm. It's still a cut. Well, we don't. We have very little in our in the smaller departments for anybody to go to any training, any mileage to go even to you know, state-sponsored seminars. I mean, I know the auditor was saying I put a little in my budget just because she had a little room. To be level funded, and so you know, we know that's a place we may have to go. We have to cut again, so yeah. but that's not good either when we can't even send people to. Oh, when he said she hasn't been to anywhere for a long time. So that's the happy FY 2013 update. Mm -hmm. um, Looking good, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so the next item was the Florence Community Center, and I just wanted to revisit that question with you briefly. Um, I know the last time we talked about it, I had proposed possibly putting together like a committee to right. look at it. And then I was wondering, as I thought about it, given the time frame, and uh, I was, I wanted to po uh, pose to the committee that we, uh, what I thought might also be another alternative was to have to appoint two or three kind of citizen members to sit with the property committee um, and and study this together. Um, much like uh, like social services and veterans affairs does with community members that right. work against CDBG, um, so have like three members, and then we would use these off finance committee meetings as and, a, and, a, for the meeting. and have a, a set piece of that meeting be to look at this issue every meeting. And it could so, for example, one meeting could have a presentation by um, you know by Dave Pomerantz on the physical plan of the building. We could do a site visit, all of us together. Mm -hmm. Another meeting could involve someone from the, uh, you know, Wayne could come and talk about zoning issues. We could have someone from commercial uh, real estate to come and give us, and then, you know, spend three or four or five months to get as, and then, and then we have a. Because that zone change will be coming to our next meeting. It will be, yeah. Just so give it more bucks rather than try to create a stand, another standalone committee, it just seemed like we should do this collaboratively since we're going to be the ones ultimately. And it, it, you know, it involves the three of us whose wards yeah, all exactly. are, you know, where wards are all there. They're right so, there. Yeah. I like the idea of the citizens committee. I think it's a so, I, so what I was thinking is I was I, um, trying to find somebody who's from the church community. And I, I have a citizen that applied for another committee where there wasn't an opening. He's on the board of directors of the church next door. So I thought he might be somebody. And he lives on Oak Street, I think. Yep. So mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. Uh, this is Douglas Lou. I yep. don't know if you know Doug yep. Lou. Um, and he, and then the other, and I was thinking of asking Florence Civic and Business if they had somebody they wanted to nominate, including Robert, Bra or you know, whoever, somebody from the Civic and Business yeah. Association. And then I don't know, a third person, I'm not sure who that might be. Um, it could just be another neighborhood resident. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I maybe thought. The, maybe even the guy, uh, Jeff Olin, is pretty active. He's a teacher okay. on the Hidden Public School System. Mm -hmm. okay. He might be, he lives across the street. You know, it might be another good one if he put the time into Bob Maher because he used to live across the street. Yeah, that's an and excellent he's, point. He's, you know, he lives next door to the business forever, and yeah. he lived across the street from the school for thirty-five like years. He lives next door to Jeff Holman. Yeah, and he knows, you know, I what's know involved. Jeff yeah. yeah, and he's an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. Worked for Dan O'Connell for quite a few years. President for years. Now. Yeah. Okay. yeah, he's a sheriff, and he's retired, so I'm sure he, okay. if he put the time in, he'd be yeah. a good guy because he knows. Smart guy. And in development in the neighborhood for sure. Yeah. Okay. 
So we'll so we'll think of a few names and, and then try to put something together for our next meeting. And you know, obviously the budget's kind of the first yeah. priority right now, but it would give us something to maybe work on over the summertime. So um, okay, so we'll do that. Uh, is there any new business items that people have or, or I know Councillor Tacey, you had some questions which we may not be able to provide answers today, yeah. but we can at least start um, we do some research. We, we pretty much did that escalate. I was, I was, glad, I was glad to talk about that yeah. escalate. I, I really want to follow up on that and see just exactly how we're going to make up for that guarantee. And um, I've had uh, a couple things that you will think that came from me, but really did not. Um, one of them was the uh, our resolution or policy on the green cars. How are we going to be able to afford? There's a, there is a cost associated with buying these newer high mileage vehicles rather than using cruisers. There's a more there's an upfront cost. Yep. Um, there are gas hogs these cars that we're using. We know that. Um, For the green. Yeah, the green cars. Or the res the, remember the policy yeah. that we passed. Mm -hmm. Have we thought about? I know we passed it. It's a it's a it's a fuzz, it's a warm and fuzzy feeling to do it. But have we thought about the economic aspect of it? As far as the, in the city, we did have a uh, so just to back up the um, the state basically closed this loophole uh, in the original requirement, which was you, cities and towns had to adopt a fuel efficient car policy. Um, but what they didn't account for was uh, cities and towns just recycling cars internally and and you know surplusing them to other departments, etc. So they they just came out with the revised regulations that specifically said you have to you can't do this anymore. So if we wanted to remain a green community, we had to grapple with this. So we did. We had a number of conversations with Dave Pomerantz and Chris Mason about it. I know that the Energy and Sustainability Commission had a bunch of conversations. And it was, when Chris presented it, he did talk about this issue that, and Dave Pomerantz did about looking at our kind of motor pool going forward. And yeah. so the thinking was uh, that we would uh, perhaps look at the Crown Vicks that we've been surplusing to other apartments, slowing those down a little bit, trying to stretch those out a little bit. Um, and then instead, and then looking into surplusing or selling them at auction, basically, and and um, using that money to create a fund to be able to then purchase new vehicles going forward, as opposed to just recycling them. Um, so that's one of the that's what we're looking at doing. Yeah. Um, and uh, so and and we'll have to see how that uh, works going forward. It definitely is a potential cost, but then you also have to look at gas mileage, you know, savings on fuel, savings on maintenance, etc. So there's also some other factors as well. The gas is four or five dollars a gallon. Exactly. Well Chris Chris also did the cost benefit analysis of them along one along yeah. with David Pomerantz. I mean part of the I mean the, the department that obviously surpluses the most vehicles is the police department and those would get <coughs> those would get transferred to other departments. So Chris and Dave discuss things like, you know, more motor pools Reducing, um, you know, take-home vehicles, vehicles that would add on mileage, and then with the with the green communities um, funding, and then also the back, and then also recycling, putting new systems in, lower maintenance costs. So I mean, we, you know, I I put it to him when he first mentioned this, and saying that really, I mean. This has got to. This has got to make sense, and it's got to work. It can't just be, as you said, a fuzzy feeling. Mm -hmm. And he said that. I mean, he broke it down, and it does make sense. It will work, and in, in and also the long term and the long view, it saves us money, um, especially in fuel costs. But in, initially, it's not going to save us money from the fuel fuel expenditures. The differential is not that significant. But the fact is that as we change and turn into a complete culture. Uh, the, the city turns into a culture of uh, focused on reduced consumption of fuel and then reduced mileage. That that will pan out. I, 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 but I, I think we've been we have, the focus has been at least on my part on being the, the green mm -hmm. community. Yeah, yeah. But in the long term, as people were talking about a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar shortfall now, this is the short. I mean, the long term is great. But how do we get it out of the short term? How do we get it 
now to get, when we're short this. You know, that, I'm just, I'm no, no, just it, thinking it, outside it, here. Yeah, just, well, they're, uh, all, they're all reasonable questions. They're questions that I asked as well, and I know that, that the mayor did as well. That, I mean, given the circumstances, you know, do we, do we give up the long-term projections and long-term savings to, to try and accommodate uh, uh, what we hope is a short-term crisis? And I mean, it also, it also, would, if we didn't adopt it, we would not be eligible right. for more green community grants. Right. So that would we'd be leaving, you know, a couple hundred thousand on yeah. the table there. So that's the other piece of it. So, well, in keeping with the state's way of dealing with things like this, I understand they've issued an RFP to get a company to come up with a way to turn these things into pedal cars. But we can buy into that state program. Sure. And the other thing too is that, the I, is that the, uh, the Crown Vicks are going away, right. and now police vehicles are going to be hybrid. I mean, in many states, there are already hybrid vehicles. So theoretically, we could have a couple of years, and then we'll be passing down you know, hybrid cruisers that meet the yeah. MPG requirements yeah. that will be a non-issue. I've had that, uh, that conversation with Richie Neal and, um, and uh, Stan Rosenberg and Peter Kopin. Um I don't mind to have, I don't mind seeing that Crown Vic with the 550 horsepower on the state highway. I think that's probably where it belongs. But I never could see the police pack, the police package in a municipal cruiser. Well, it, it, it kept the Crown Vic as a vehicle existing because police departments across the country. But there's a cycle, it's, it's an intimidating. Yeah, well, it's, it, exactly. It's also easy to ID the headlight array behind you. And it's a, Absolutely. But the, the, thing, the, the thing about the Green Communities Grants, they're standalone, that's money. But then they also leverage other grants. And, and with the loss of that, actually, if you project out, there's a potential for a significant loss in, 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 in grant funds if we don't meet the criteria. Now, I mean, this, this throws a curve. This, you know, we agreed to all the conditions and terms and met them and surpassed them in some cases. And then... No, I didn't have They changed the rules. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. figure. And so, but the fact is, in order to... It's, it's, not, it's not onerous. It's a pain in the place where pains occur that you don't want them to. But the fact is, is that, that it, is, it allows us to bring in more money than we're going to pay out, which is ultimately... When you do the cost benefit analysis, that's the critical point. That's the tipping point. And that's all for the grants and so forth. That's well, that's for the grants. It's for, and then ultimately, yes, the grants, you add into that the, uh, the savings. And, and then plus, you know, the, whatever you get on the resale, the resale's not going to be significant, you know, two, three grand maybe per, per vehicle. But. Can we talk about take home vehicles? There's only a couple people who take home vehicles. I don't even know who they are. Yeah, the on-call yeah. center. Who takes the, the chiefs do, and I think the on-call detectives do, that might be called in at 2 in the morning or something, and I think yeah, we, Ned does. I know we've done a look at that. Because he's, I think Ned, I think the, basically the 24, I, I think Dave Pomerantz may have one as well. Dave Pomerantz, yeah. Mike Demon. People that have to get called in in the middle of the night for building. Yeah. Yeah. But, the but the that's something chief, Dave is looking at. Police chief. Looking, yeah. And there's... Um, Chris Norris and Dwayne Nichols. Yeah, I'm not sure about all those. Yeah. Guys, if they have take home or not. I know that they do have vehicles, but I don't know if they're take. We can we can get information on that. Yeah, as we get to be four dollars and twenty five cents yeah. for a gallon of gas, a trip to West Hampton and back. I know. I call your offices more than I travel down here to see you anymore, mm -hmm. which you're probably happy about. Um, but. Uh, I really have found myself not driving my Dodge Hemi. I see you don't drive the excursion or the big wagon as much. You take the cost effect. I, I'm doing it all the time. And I try to figure out, I figured how much it's going to cost me to drive from the center of Florence to here and back again in that Dodge. Well, it's a gallon of gas. Not bad this way, it's downhill. <laughs> there you go. But it's still, it's four dollars. Or five, it's just in fuel cost. And every time that so I get, uh, I get more and more cost conscious as things get worse and worse. So, But um, I, I'd really be interested in knowing how many take-home vehicles sure. are occurring. We can get that information. Thank you. Yeah. I, know that, I know that we did an inventory of them a few years ago, so we can try to update that. I, mean, I know David's looking at all that stuff, so we can get that 
I know we have one, we have a 6,000 pound F350 four wheel drive snow plow diesel that goes back and forth to West Springfield every day. And that's out of the DPW. And I, I, I the guy that drives is a great guy. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but it's a water department. Um, it's a Ford F-250 diesel? F-350. F-350. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I just think about the cost of that truck and the miles it puts on it. Um, I think well, the street, better street, diesel the street than superintendent has a 250. Yeah. It's just, uh, just a thought. Yep. Yep. I mean, uh, I mean, look, look at everything is on the table right now. Totally. Right. Well, I can see like the fire chief, the police chief, and them. I mean, they need sure. to have it. Yep. You I know, get that. Because when anything happens, they're on call twenty four hours a day. So we'll 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 try to get an inventory on that as part of this. So. I know you're looking at cell phones as well. That's so. another one that I'm. Uh, cell phones. Yeah. I've been looking at that very carefully because uh, there. Were Previous mayor had implemented a policy around it, and, it's, and I've spent way too much time dealing with cell phones. So I'm yeah. looking at that as uh, another area we can save. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not we need to, you know, cell phones are so common now that yeah. not, whether we need to be providing them or anything. Yeah. So oh, that's costly. Yeah. I'm not trying to stir up any dust here. You're not. No, you're it's not. Just at all. all of this stuff is really something that's starting to eat at me. Nope. Um, what about we're, car starters? I don't. Because I remember we had a meeting at Ryan Road School, yeah. and um, the Georgia Keys. What? Is that right? Bob Dastel had questioned Georgia Keys in regards to um, certain vehicles he saw going home, or in the afternoon at a certain at all times with him mm -hmm. of using city vehicles going to Chesterfield or whatever. Okay. And George had mentioned something to the effect that he wanted to make sure his staff had the trucks at their homes and that each one of them were going to have vehicle starters. That way, if they got a call, they could just start it from the inside of their home, even if it was going to cost $300 or $350. That's what he wanted, and that's what was going to be done. Now, do, we still, do they have that? I, that one I'd have to check on. I I wish you yeah. would. Sure. That's another big expense. Yeah. Well, if they have them, we're not going to. If they were installed. Well, no, you can't yeah. Yeah. Them now. The horses have to learn, but I, I don't know about that one. I think mean, we can check into that. Yeah. So. But I also know too that they get a lot of people that call, but I know ones that go home and don't. I think it calls about one traffic back and forth to Worthington a couple of times a day, and I know that's false. You know, so I'm not bringing up anything that <laughs> I wouldn't say unless I knew it to be the truth. But that car. That pickup truck does not go to Worthington and back a couple of times a day. Okay. In case you've gotten that I complaint, I okay, no. I've gotten it from a couple of different people. I know it's not the case, so okay. I can I can weed those out. Okay, so we'll look at those and any other ideas people have. Um, can you, do you have another? Any other? Are we still in new business? Uh, yes. Okay. How are we making out with the phone system? Are we saving money? Have we seen bills? Do we know what is going on with the phone system? We can. That's. I know you just mentioned that to me before the meeting. We can try to get get an update yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to know for actually. And that, that should be easy because the Verizon bill should be like. Yeah. A shadow of its former self because all those lines with that Centrex, all those lines were dedicated. So. Right. It should be really different. Yeah. So there should there should be a marked difference in that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe it'll be half, but. I know that it was proposed to be half, but I, I don't know if it'll be that that dramatic. But we it should find be. That out. We can try and get you an update on that. And do, do we know what the total ticket was on that? How much it cost us the total? Yeah, because so it was it was pretty much covered by by Comcast. Comcast. Yeah, yeah, it was. We can find out. Yeah, we're still paying the debt service on that, mm -hmm. um, but we have um, the Comcast. Account is giving is providing like one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars to pay for that. So to pay for yeah. it. Okay. And I think we only have like two or three years left on that. Yeah. Check on that. And then the balance was line savings because yeah. with the Centrex, each one of those phones had its own line. Yeah, I know. And that was what was expensive the line charges. Yeah. Now they don't do that. Yeah. I'm just curious to see just how we didn't make out with it. 
know it was going to be a bill. Yeah, because we did that. That was a while ago, right? Because Ray was yep. on finance when we did it originally. Yep. Back when he was voting no on everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's actually across the street at the, uh, the council, council chambers. chambers. Yeah. Municipal building? Yes. Okay. I think that was all I had. Okay. Any other new business items or questions? So it was five years old. I think it was. I don't, yeah. I don't remember. I'll have to look. Then I would entertain right. a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yeah, so it's probably only coming up on two years left on that. Yeah. In which case, it really starts Sorry. getting late. No problem. Because then it'll be good time for the fight. I think, uh, I'm hoping it works out as well as we thought it was going to. It's kind of just with the phone yeah. charges. Yeah. Really That's right. It's kind of the day off. It's not too bad to figure out. Who, who's on our cable board, our cable advisory? Mm -hmm. Who's on the cable advisory board? And actually, now, now that uh, Terry Anderson gone. She was the city liaison with that, but it was um, Lee um, Bailey, uh, 